Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Nicole. Today we're going to be doing the top five facts about the Titanic. Uh, so let's get right into it. Number one is the ship was called the Titanic for a reason. The ship was massive compared to the other ships. It was named, its name derived from the Titan of Greek mythology, the second generation of divine beings and uh, reference for their colossal size. The ship was 882 feet long and towered 175 feet in height. Its um, rivets on steel plates alone weighed 1,200 tons. Overall, the linear weighed 46,328 tons. Wow. Number two is the passenger count. There was 2,224 passengers coming in from many countries bound for New York. Most of them planned to seek a new life abroad, and the total casualties are not exactly known due to some confusion in the passenger list. Number three is the third class did un was unalive. First, the Titanic would have accommodated more than 1,000 passengers, but only 700 people were aboard. On its maiden voyage, and just letting you know, those 300 people, wow, if they had to cancel, I wonder how they felt after that. Seeing like, they must have been like, thankfully we did not go on that ship, or I, I don't know if you would qualify having survivor skills since you weren't actually on the trip. If you canceled it, there might be that possibility though. Um, anyway, so in its maiden voyage and said national coal strike could have contributed to this. Some of those who have purchased those tickets might have canceled their plans and many preferred uh, to wait for the strike to end before planning to go on trips. So I'm assuming that was more um, super expensive at the time for them. Uh, many did die third class accommodations were on the lower deck and that's where the accident happened first. And uh, so it was first to be flooded there and the panic crews weren't able to open the gates and many were trapped at the bottom. Number four is the ticket prices were so high. And this is the reason is because they wanted it to be spacious, comfortable and have a luxurious kind of experience. Uh, so that's what made it um, that's what made it more expensive. There were a few financial restrictions given to their engineers and designers during its construction. This also meant the ship would have to, would have to sell tickets at a much higher price. So first class was thirty dollars to four thousand three hundred and fifty dollars. I don't get the cost there because why is it such a big jump? And today that looks more like seven hundred and seventy five dollars or a whole could be a house one hundred and twelve thousand dollars. The amenities that were a part of the ship were you got a library, swimming pool, high end restaurants and fancy cabins. I don't know if everyone was allowed to use the library and swimming pool or the high end restaurants. I don't know if that was just for first class. That's what it kind of sounded like when I read it, read it, read it. Second class is 12 to 60, it was $12 to $60, and today that looks more like $300 to $1,500. And third class, lastly, is was $8 to $40, and today it looks more like $1,100. Number five, so the ship ran on coal fuel. It would take a number of days for the gigantic ship to sail and reach its destination, passing through some of ports. It had to carry extra um, cart, cart, what was that, um, to make it possible. So let me look. I can't remember. My bad. Um, do, 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 do. Okay, sorry, had to carry extra cargo to make this possible because the engine ran on coal fuel. So it carried along with 6,000 tons of coal, sailing on an average 600 tons of coal per day. So by my calculations, is that like 10 days and then you got to reload? Uh, these coals were fed to the broiler by employees referred to as the firemen. It all took place at the lower deck and it was hot and fuming um, in the room. 
Those on the lower deck were the first victims of the accident. Their working rooms were automatically sealed, or were flooded, and the and they were left trapped in. Sorry, the working rooms were flooded, but they were left trapped inside the doors, and they that were automatically sealed to keep the ship from afloat. However, obviously, they ended up being one of the first victims, uh, being on the lower deck and all. So, number five, I feel like we have time for two more because that was just not long enough, right? So, we're going to go into number six. The Titanic had four stacks. Due to the size of its structure, the Titanic had long decks. Its uppermost deck was open and house, housed four large funnels known as stacks. They were made of pine and teak, and three of these served as vents for the coal combustion com combustion below. The fourth stack, just as large as the others, were actually built for aesthetic purposes. Other than it served the minor function of ventilating the kitchen, the crew members were panicked and hurried to the ventilation of the steam for fear that the contact of the cold water against the heat of the steam would cause the stacks to erupt. So this is... A <laughs> Not only did the ship sink, this was a sketchy ship to be on in the first place. Many of the crew members were not sailors. The employment of the crew members for the Titanic was done rather hastily, with only a month to go before it was scheduled to sail. Those who got training had done so minimal, minimally. Some even embarked on the ship just hours before leaving port. This is one of the reasons why many crew members were ill-prepared and disorganized during the hours following the accident. Thomas Whitley pictured a, uh, was a steward of the Titanic who broke his leg mounting a lifeboat, lifeboat when the debris fell upon him. Beside him is Violet Giuseppe, also a stewardess of the ship who had endured the near sinking of the RMS Olympic a year before. Jessop would again, or Jessop, Jessop, would again experience the sinking of the Britannic, Britannic, a sister ship of the Titanic that was used as a hospital ship four years after having endured all these trials at sea. She was called the Miss Unsinkable. That's actually really cool. I didn't know that. That's an extra uh, fact inside of a fact there for you guys. Um, and then we have time for one more. I know I keep saying other things, but that's okay. Uh, give me one second. So here's some more of the Titanic facts. Ooh, little fly there. Um, I thought it was going to be long enough of a video, and I was wrong. So that's why I am adding more to these facts. That's why I always have backup, which I love having. So let's get right into it right now. So... Basically, after the Titanic had, um, had had gone all below underwater, it lies 12,600 feet underwater. The ruins of the Titanic lie nearly 2.5 miles beneath the surface of the ocean, approximately 370 miles off the coast of Newfoundland, Canada. The ship broke in two, and the gap between the bow and the stern is about 2,000 feet in the seabed. So when those four or five gentlemen that... Un an RIP passed away from going to search using the Ocean Gate um, sub submersive submarine. Like they would have had to travel 2,000 feet all around the Titanic just to see something, just to see it. If if you know, and like if you if if the, if people who work or have worked on these submarines or who, who do the research in the ocean, who take care of us from being safe going down in the ocean, they, it, we would be, it would be a lot easier probably to go down there. They would probably make it easier and more people would do it. That's why I was questioning that, they, why they did that. I didn't know that you could do it. Like, that is kind of neat though. One day we were able to, however, it, it, I had heard that by 2030, the Titanic will completely disintegrate. It will be completely gone, vanished, donezo. I don't know if that's true. It's possible. However, we'll see. Um, and I don't think we'll ever, ever 
see it, you know, except for the people who were on it. So number two is the iceberg that hit the ship may have jutted out 100 feet above water. The iceberg that the Titanic collided with is speculated to have been anywhere from 500 to 100 feet above water. The entire iceberg is believed to have been between 200 and 400 feet long. Or four, 200 and 400 feet long. That's pretty long. Next one is over half the people on the board could have survived if all the space available on the lifeboats were used. I do believe that they were just trying to get certain people on the boat, or if it, I don't know if it was first come, first serve. Let me know in the comments below what you guys think about that. Was it first come, first serve, or were they just wanting the first class and the second class, and they didn't really care about the third? I don't know. I don't want to sound rude about saying that, but that's what I thought I had read or heard about. <clears throat> Next one is, and this will, and then we'll go do, we'll do two more, and then that's it for sure.